and the new Zan PF government. Democracy, good governance, the rule of law, and the politics of tolerance will be entrenched. In line the August 2017 coup ended Robert Mugabe's nearly four decade long tyrannical rule. At that time, Nangagwa made the exact same promises. No one is above the law. This is a new Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe we all want. On the same day as Emerson Nangagwa's swearing-in ceremony, General Bryce Nguema was sworn in as the interim president of Gabon. Nguema and his presidential guard staged a military coup a few days earlier on 30 August. I solemnly undertake to spare no effort to ensure that at the end of this transition, our country Gabon has strong democratic and credible institutions. Ali Bongo, who had been in power for 14 years, was ousted after soldiers placed him under house arrest shortly after winning elections that were criticized by opposition groups as fraudulent. His father, Omar Bongo, ruled Gabon for 40 years. Both are known for their lavish lifestyles while governing the fourth largest crude oil producer country in sub-Saharan Africa. Ali Bongo's ownership of luxury cars and properties with millions in France and the USA contrasts starkly with the 30% of Gabon's 2.4 million citizens living in poverty. Many in the country celebrate the Bongo family's removal from power. To all the friends, that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise. Pathetically, Bongo took to social media. And my family. Meanwhile, in Zimbabwe, and despite the numerous damning irregularities observed by the regional body SADC, Nangagwa declared victory in the August 2023 election. was Access to the voters' law, severe restriction on the freedom of expression, the rural vote compromised the state-owned media houses, remain biased, late arrival of ballot papers, poor administration at some polling stations. The mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections. Zimbabwe is a sovereign state. These observations were trashed by Mnangagwa, with SADC member heads of state like South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa showing open support to the Zimbabwean regime by attending Mnangagwa's inauguration. ECAS, the regional body comprising of 11 member states, has suspended Gabon's membership following the coup. Ironically, the ECAS region is notorious for its autocratic regimes that cynically enrich themselves through the pillaging of abundant natural resources, all while perpetrating numerous human rights atrocities within their borders. In Zimbabwe six years ago, as is currently evident in Gabon, both coup d'etat occurrences were deeply intertwined with the genuine grievances of their respective populations. This provided a facade of justification for the coup plotters' actions. Following Nagagwa's takeover of Zimbabwe, citizens continue to suffer under a pseudo-democratic system. Regime changes through coups do not lead to a path of democracy or improved governance. Instead, these abrupt power shifts tend to create a dangerous cycle where one coup begets the potential for more in the same country. Citizens are the ones who ultimately bear the brunt of disruption caused during and after coups, as their aspirations for positive change are sidelined and undermined by weak institutions and opaque agendas of the elite. <laughs>